All right, everyone. Thank you so much for joining today for our Viterbi Progressive Degree Program online information session. Um, my name is Canon Marali Theron. I serve as Associate Director in our Graduate Admission Office for Viterbi. And today we're gonna to be going over a few details regarding our PDP program. Um, as we're going through it, there may be questions that come up. What I do ask is that um, you're welcome to enter questions into the chat um, as you're wanting to. However, we'll go over all the questions at the end of the uh, presentation. So today we're gonna to be going over the PDP program. What is it? Um, the eligibility to uh, apply for the program, uh, the key deadlines that are coming up, how to apply, any implications with financial aid and steps that you would need to do, uh, scholarships uh, that are offered for PDP students, and then um, any additional instructions for um, international students who are interested in the program. So what is PDP? It's an accelerated master's degree um, open to outstanding undergraduate juniors and seniors at USC. It's not restrictive to Viterbi students, um, depending on the program that you're interested in. Um, you could be from different uh, schools such as Dornsife, Annenberg, uh, Marshall School of Business, um, and you can still apply for the Viterbi PDP programs. Um, and then of course our Viterbi undergraduate students are also encouraged to look into it as well. Um, now, it, it does instruct um, about juniors and seniors, and I'll get into a little bit more detail as to why um, it should be that you're applying at that time. It has to do more with the unit count that you've already earned. Um, but the program itself allows you to take master's level courses while you're finishing your final semesters of your bachelor's degree. And allowing you to do so, blends both programs, um, allowing you a coherent plan of study with the possibility of a reduction in the number of units that are required for you to complete your graduate degree. Um, so in other words, as it's outlined here, the main benefits are to start the graduate coursework earlier than you would normally if you applied for a master's program after finishing your bachelor's. And the second is possibly getting a reduction in the units that are required for your master's program completion. So eligibility requirements are pretty straightforward. You have to have at least a 3.2 cumulative USC GPA to apply for consideration. Um, if you're a transfer student, you would have had to have completed at least two semesters at USC prior to applying. And the USC GPA is what is gonna be used for uh, satisfying the eligibility requirement there, um, not any transfer unit uh, GPA. Uh, you would also have to earn at least 64 units uh, at USC, and that is uh, going to be not including pre-high school graduation transfer credits. Uh, that 64 earned units, I do wanna clarify, can include transfer units from other institutions. But again, as I mentioned previously, you would have, to, for transfer students, you would have to have enrolled and successfully earned units for two semesters as a full-time student. You do also need to adhere to a 12-term limit. And what's meant by that is that from the time you first enter college, you would need to have completed, completed both your undergraduate program and your graduate program within 12 semesters of that time. And the semester count that we use is fall and spring semesters. So if we equate that um, to years, it's six years is the equivalent of 12 semesters. Um, if you do need clarification on what your 12 term limit is, um, I'll provide an email that you can use to reach out to our office um, to inquire about it and we can go over that in more detail as well. Eligibility does not guarantee admission. So just because these requirements are met does not mean that you are admitted to the program. Uh, the program we, what we've tended to see is a lot of very competitive applicants apply. However, we are going to take into account several different things regarding your application as we consider you for admission. And I'll go over that in more detail soon. The deadlines that are coming up 
are going to be Sunday, February 25th. This is a priority deadline. So if you're interested in applying for scholarship consideration, you have to apply by that deadline. Um, the other piece to it is that for any uh, registration, and I apologize, it looks like there's a typo here, but if you are looking to apply, looking to start your PDB program in fall of 2024, uh, you would need to apply by this February 25th deadline. Uh, if you don't meet that deadline, then you would need to indicate in your application that uh, you are looking to start in a future term. Uh, the final deadline for the spring application is May 5th, uh, so you can apply by that time as well. Uh, again, it's saying by the first deadline, you would need to apply for fall 24. Our scholarship deadline is that same deadline as well. Our scholarship application is included on our PDP webpage that's uh, specific to Viterbi. Um, I can provide the link at the end of this uh, webinar as well for you all. Um, so going back to the admissions criteria that I was mentioning previously, uh, if you meet those basic requirements, that's an important step in applying. However, when we are reviewing your applications, we do take into consideration academic trends. So if you have maybe started off very well, but have not done as well, that will be taken into consideration. If uh, the vice versa happens, that also will be taken into consideration. For those applicants who uh, may have not had as strong of a USC GPA, um, between a 3.2 and a 3.5, we do ask uh, for a letter of recommendation in addition to the application, and I'll go over that momentarily. Um, how to apply. So with Viterbi, and this is specifically for our the non-Viterbi uh, attendees, I just want to make sure um, that you all are aware that there is a separate process in which to apply which is that you would have to go to My Viterbi and you would select Progressive Degree Program. And through that, you would complete an, a brief electronic application. Um, that application is going to uh, include pretty much information about what program of interest you have. If you are required to submit a letter of recommendation through that application, you'll be able to input your recommender info and they'll be uh, sent an email. Um, based on the contact information that you provide uh, to complete the recommendation. So that's built within that application. Uh, within that application as well, you would be expected to upload two reports, a STARS report and a transfer credit report, both of which can be obtained through your, my, uh, through your USC account, um, through OASIS. And as I mentioned, the letter of recommendation is only required if your GPA is below 3.5. So um, if you have above 3.5, it is not a, a requirement. You are welcome to submit one, but it's not an expectation of the application. So impacts to financial aid. Um, as indicated in the USC catalog, Progressive degree students are classified as undergrad students until their undergraduate degree is conferred or they complete 144 units, whichever comes first. There are other circumstances in which you may change from a undergraduate student to a graduate student standing. So it's important to go to the financial aid website um, that is linked in this presentation. And I will also share the link in the chat um, following this webinar so that you can determine what uh, what status you may be. And if you are unaware of it, making sure to complete the degree transfer unit status check. That is something that's required of all students who are financial aid recipients uh, receiving either financial aid and or university scholarships. And that is the first step I would recommend for any student to complete prior to starting the application process, if applicable. For our PDP scholarships, we have merit-based uh, scholarships that are open to USC undergrads who are applying to Viterbi PDP. And this is specifically for those who are new applicants applying to be accepted into a PDP program. So as I mentioned, this 
deadline that's coming up is February 25th. We have a non-renewable award ranging from $5,000 to $10,000, and it is for tuition only. Um, we actually awarded six recipients last semester, so um, one additional compared to what we normally award, um, and we had over 80 applicants. So it is quite competitive uh, process for the scholarships. However, um, you are welcome to apply for it. It's an amazing opportunity. Um, there's a scholarship application linked in our um, website, which the link is there for. And then if you apply for the scholarship, and let's just say that you're not considered for it, um, you can still apply for PDP. Uh, those two are not um, married to each other. So, you know, if you do apply for PDP, um, you can still be considered for that regardless of the scholarship application result. Um, and an important note on that is you would need to submit your PDP application first before submitting the scholarship application. Um, that's very important that you do that because we want to make sure that those who are applying for scholarships are indeed applying in the term in which they are, the scholarship is being offered. We also have a USC Meta Fellowship application. It's a merit-based scholarship, and it does cover a full amount of tuition and fees as determined by the scholarship committee. For this particular application, you have to be a US citizen or permanent resident. With the previous scholarship application, that is, there are no restrictions on uh, citizenship um, for the PDP, the general PDP scholarship application. Uh, for the USC Meta Fellowship, um, students should be interested in AI algorithms and systems, and it is restrictive based on the program in which you are pursuing. So this is limited to those who are pursuing a master's in electrical and computer engineering or industrial and systems engineering uh, or programs within those departments, rather. And the deadline for that is February 15th. For the spring deadline, fall deadline is September 25th, and the link provided will also allow you to learn more about that opportunity. Lastly, we have our GEM scholarship. Uh, the GEM program, um, as detailed here, there's a consortium with a mission to enhance the value of the nation's human capital by increasing the participation of underrepresented groups. African Americans, American Indians, and Hispanic Americans at the master's and doctoral levels in engineering and science. So there are two different types of fellows, an employer jump fellow um, with industry and university support, and then a university fellow um, who receives university support. Um, and for eligibility for this, you would have to be a senior or graduate or, or a graduate of an accredited engineering or computer science program at the time of application. And you have to have a minimum cumulative GPA of 2.8. And you have to contractually agree to intern for two summers with sponsoring uh, a GEM employer beginning the summer after sponsorship. Now with the GPA requirement, if you are looking to apply for the GEM scholarship as a PDP applicant, the PDP GPA requirement supersedes the GPA requirement of the GEM scholarship. So you would have to have a 3.2 GPA um, for, to be considered through PDP. Um, if you are um, considered for GEM, but you do not meet the, the GPA requirement, um, we will need to, you will need to consult with the department for further instructions um, on that. So as far as the timeline is concerned, uh, the GEM portal opens in July. You're able to work on your application and submit your resume, statement of purpose, and then three letters of recommendation. Um, in addition to that, there's a select number of GEM member universities that you're able to indicate. So um, we hope that you would indicate USC as a GEM member university that you're looking to attend if you apply for this. You have a maximum of up to 10, as mentioned there. Um, in August and September time, that's when the fall application opens. 
October, you would start submitting the GEM application. The deadline is in November, and then the application deadline is in December. It is slightly different for PDP. So again, if you have an interest in the GEM scholarship, but have further questions about the timeline and applying, you're welcome to reach out to us. Lastly, notes for international students. The addition of a degree program is a CVIS reportable change of status. All international students admitted to the PDP will need to meet with OIS in order to obtain a change of program I-20. So that's something to keep in mind. If you have any questions, uh, please make sure to reach out to the OIS office. Um, if you have their contact info or need it, please reach out to our office and we're happy to provide it. The OPT is also impacted international students lose one of their two opportunities for OPT. So that's something to be aware of as you consider pursuing PDP.